in today's video I'm going to give you a brief explanation of what you can expect during an assessment and also the psychological therapy when working with post-traumatic stress disorder. I've noticed that the people who actually come to an assessment, sometimes they have this assumption that they're going to have to tell me each and every detail of what actually has happened to them. And that's definitely not the case. In an assessment, we might need to know more or less what has happened, so have a brief summary of the events, but definitely we're not going to be asking you about details of your trauma. And also, when the psychological treatment starts, you're going to be gradually explaining what has happened to you. And also, it might be a case that you might not always actually need to tell us uh, each and every detail of what you have experienced. In during assessment, what we want to learn about your experience of your post-traumatic stress disorder, it is as to whether you are experiencing flashbacks, nightmares, dissociations. We would like to know what triggers them, how often they happen, but we wouldn't again go into exploring the content of your flashbacks or nightmares. Additionally, we also we would like to know whether you are engaging in any avoidance. We would like to know how the post-traumatic stress disorder is impacting your day-to-day -day life. So whether you can work, whether you are able to maintain your relationships, whether you can engage in new relationships. In addition to that, in an assessment, we also we would like to know how you actually help yourself to manage the distress in your current life. So whether you're using maybe drugs, alcohol, food to do that, or whether there is something else. In addition to that, we would also ask you about any previous experience of therapy what it was, whether it was one-to-one -one therapy, group therapy, uh, what was your experience of that, what you have learned, what you like, what you dislike about the treatments that you had. By learning about your previous experience of a psychological treatment might actually help us to guide us what might be the best therapy option for you in the future. Uh, additionally, we don't really ask about uh, cognitions around trauma in the assessment. We might focus more on certain facts. In some cases, even if the trauma has nothing really to do with your childhood, we still might ask you a few questions about your upbringing, where you grew up, about you know, the family context. And we would then include that in a brief formulation that again, we would present to you um, towards the end of the assessment. And one of the reasons why we don't actually talk about details of the trauma during assessment is that we don't want to leave the person emotionally vulnerable. As I've mentioned before, in the assessment, we're going to be recommending what we think might suit them best with, you know, how they're presenting. And what is also really important, we're going to be asking the person uh, about their goals for therapy and also about their motivations. So once we are agree on the psychological treatment, on the length of the sessions, how it's going to occur, when, how many reviews we're going to have, how often they're going to happen, then from day one, we actually start working on a formulation. And this formulation is going to start evolving and expanding to every session. And also in those very few initial sessions, we're going to spend a lot of time on psychoeducation. So explaining differences, for example, between the trauma memories and normal memories. So there's going to be a lot of normalizing. Alongside of developing formulation, and also providing the psychoeducation in those very initial sessions, we're gonna be also working on grounding techniques. So we're gonna be teaching and actually practicing the grounding techniques together in our first few sessions. So later when we're gonna go into actually working on maybe flashbacks or nightmares, the person is actually equipped with tools to actually help them to manage their uncomfortable emotions. And here when I'm talking about the first initial sessions, it could be for some people six initial sessions, ten initial sessions, it really depends on a person on the presenting problem. Depends how many sessions the person and the therapist they need to actually build some sort of formulation, how many sessions they're gonna need to actually practice those running techniques and how many sessions they're gonna need to actually build this very good therapeutic professional relationship that is built on really strong trust so that the person can feel safe and secure to actually expose themselves emotionally and go into detail and explore the details of the trauma that they suffered. 
So that will be it for today. And if you enjoyed this video, then please like it, subscribe, and make sure you're gonna hit that notification bell. So every time when I upload a new video, you're gonna get notified and you're not gonna miss out on this really interesting content. And I'm gonna see you in the next one then. Thank you, bye-bye.